Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Love Starter. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new app and web property in Google Analytics. This new type of property allows to combine user data from the Google Analytics tracking code with user data from Firebase. And even though it's called an app and web property, you still might want to use it even if you're only going to track your website. Why? Well, this new type of property comes with new reports and some automatic tracking features which are called enhanced measurement. For a rundown of the new reports and features, head to my blog. You can find a link in the description below this video. I will also outline some of the changes in this video. The new app and web property is the latest evolution of Google Analytics. It's designed to provide greater flexibility in the way that we track actions taking place on our website and in our app. Rather than being built around page views, we can now see that Google Analytics is built around a flexible event structure, where we can send all types of different information to our reports. This added flexibility is welcome, but will likely cause some confusion if you are just getting started. Don't worry though, we'll walk through exactly how you can get up and running quickly to track pages on your website and some of the other actions people are taking. Okay, so to take advantage of these new reports and features, you'll need to create a new app and web property. If you want to start using a new property today, then you'll need to create a new Firebase project. However, over the coming days and weeks, this option will be rolling out directly inside Google Analytics. Let's take a look at the steps. To check to see if you can create a new app and web property directly inside Google Analytics, we can select Create Property. In my account, we can see there are options to create a website property or a mobile app property, but there is no option to create a combined website and app property. So I will need to start by creating a new Firebase project to access the new app and web property. You'll need to do this even if you're not planning to track an app. So let's head to Firebase. You can do this by navigating to firebase.google.com. We need to select Get Started or Go to Console. Now we can create a project. We need to name our project. I'm going to call this project Love Starter Demo, but you can name the project anything you like. If you are developing an app, then this would be the name of your app. Then we need to agree to the terms and click Continue. We're going to leave Set Up Google Analytics for My Project selected, and we're going to click Continue. Now we need to select our existing Google Analytics account to link it to Firebase. This will also create the new app and web property in Google Analytics. I'm going to select my demo account and then I'm going to click Create Project. We need to wait a moment for the Firebase project to be created. Now we can head to our Google Analytics account. If you're already in the admin section of Google Analytics, you'll need to refresh the page in your browser. And now when we select the property dropdown, we can see the new app and web property is available. Let's select our new property. You will notice the configuration options are different to what we'd find in a standard Google Analytics property. We can see options for property settings, user management, data streams, data settings, default reporting identity, and options to link Google Ads and to manage the link to our Firebase project. Let's take a look at these options. 
First we have property settings. This is similar to the standard property settings, but with only a few options. We can rename our property, we can select our default industry category, the time zone for our reports, and the currency. Next we have user management. This is the same as what we'd find in a standard property. We can add users and user groups to the property and adjust their permissions. Then there is data streams. This is a bit like tracking information in a standard property, but you'll notice some differences. To start, we need to select the first data stream for our new property. You can think of this as a data source or where you'll be collecting information. I'm going to select web. Now I need to enter the URL of my website and I can name the data stream. We can also see that enhanced measurement is enabled by default. This new feature will automatically track a number of common actions into Google Analytics. Let's select the configuration icon to take a look. We can see enhanced measurement will automatically track page views, scroll depth, outbound clicks, site search, embedded YouTube videos and file downloads. I want to automatically track all of these actions, so I'm going to leave all of the options enabled. Now we can click Create Stream. We're now given everything we need to begin collecting data into our new property. There are some changes here too. We have the option of adding a new tracking tag to our website. We can see this under Add New On-Page Tag. So if you don't currently use Google Analytics, you can use this option to start collecting data. However, if you're already using Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager, then you'll want to use one of the other options. If you have already implemented Google's Global Site Tag or gtag.js on your website, then you can connect your existing tag to the new property to begin collecting data without having to change anything on your website. You can find a link to my video covering the global site tag in the description below this video. Now I want to highlight that based on my initial experiments, if you want to collect data from your existing Google Analytics tracking code, you will need to make sure that the global site tag is actually implemented directly on your website. If it isn't, then simply linking to your existing property doesn't appear to currently pull any data into your new property. This might change in the future, but for now, you'll need to add the new tag to your website. Finally, if you're using Google Tag Manager, then you can add a new tag inside your Google Tag Manager container. To do this, you'll need to copy the measurement ID and use this when you configure the new app and web configuration tag inside Google Tag Manager. Let's do this now. Now that we've copied the measurement ID, let's head to Google Tag Manager. Since I'm already using Google Tag Manager on my website to collect data into my existing standard Google Analytics property, I'm going to add an additional tag to my container. We can now create a new tag. Let's name the tag Google Analytics App and Web and select App and Web Configuration as the tag type. Then we paste the measurement ID into the tag configuration. And now we need to select a trigger for the tag. Let's select All Pages. This will fire the tag on all the pages of our website. Let's save the tag. This means we now have the new App and Web Configuration tag and we have our existing standard Google Analytics tag. So we're sending data to our existing property and to our new property. We can now click Submit to publish the changes to our website. Let's now head to our website and reload the page. This will trigger the new tag and begin collecting data into our new property. 
to view the reports, we can now head back to Google Analytics. We can now start exploring the reports. On the left, we can select Real Time. This shows us the current users on our website. It's more interactive than the real time reports in a standard property. And you can open the user snapshot to see how individual users are engaging with your website and app in real time. Traveling down the menu on the left, you can access the standard reports. These are much more concise than what we find in a standard property. We can view information about our users, their demographics, their behavior, and technology. Each report includes multiple cards which are dynamic and allow to drill down to view additional details. You can view conversion events, including transactions, in the conversions report. And all of the events you are tracking, like page views and other actions, are available in the All Events report. The App and Web property includes a range of ad hoc analysis options, which can be found under Analysis. This includes the option to explore your own metric and dimension combinations and perform funnel analysis. For more details about the reports you find in the new App and Web property, head to my blog. You can find a link in the description below this video. Are you going to create a new app and web property? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, then please like it so I know to make more videos like this. See you next time.